everyone, it's Alice and welcome to what I think is gonna be like a two to three day reading vlog. So it's Easter here in Norway right now, or I guess it's Easter everywhere. It's the same everywhere, isn't it? Either way, it's Easter and I just felt like making a vlog. I was thinking of doing it this weekend, doing like a weekend reading vlog, but then I felt like starting it today. So it's gonna be like a two to three day weekend of reading, except it's the middle of the week, it's Tuesday today. <laughs> I actually quite like Easter, mostly because in Norway we usually get quite a lot of days off. It's like a bank holiday, so everything closes for... I don't know what these days are called in English, but it's like Thursday, Friday, we have reduced hours on Saturdays, and then Sundays are closed, and then Monday. So if you don't have to work the Saturday in between, you usually get like five days off in a row, which is the best. I will say though, it doesn't feel quite the same this year because Oslo is in lockdown. We are surfing the third wave, which sucks, and everything is closed already. My work has actually been closed for months. I haven't been to work since January. So for me, this is just like another <laughs> weekend but i'm trying to like find some joy in the fact that it's easter either way which is why i figured i would do this vlog this time of year is like the peak of the season of reading crime novels and watching crime series on tv though i don't know if this is just like a norwegian thing i feel like maybe it's not but at least here for easter we're obsessed with like crime stuff so i've picked out two mystery crime books that i want to read i think and a little bit because it's the season and also because I just want to. So my main priority is reading The Marlowe Murder Club by Robert Thurgood. I got this book very recently. This author is the author of the Murder in the Caribbean series, which I've read three books in and really enjoyed. It's like a very cozy mystery series and I just thought this could be fun to read. I will say though, I keep getting this confused with the Thursday Murder Club, which is a book I read earlier this year. I think it came out late last year or this year, and this is a very new release as well. And it's kind of funny that they're named almost the same thing. <laughs> Funnily enough, the plots also sound like somewhat similar because both books follow like elderly characters. In this one we meet a woman who I think is in her 70s and she witnesses a brutal murder and she tells the police about it but they don't believe her and she sort of... I think she <laughs> joins forces with some other old people and they try to solve the mystery which is exactly what happens in the Thursday Murder Club. I did really like that book though so hopefully I will really like this one as well and I'm sure once I get into it they're not gonna be that similar at least I hope so. The second book I'm planning on reading, although I may change my mind about this, I don't really know, but I've picked out The Chain by Adrian McKinty. This, I'm just very curious about this. I have a feeling it's not gonna be that good, but I just wanna read it anyway. It's about like a chain of kidnappings. So this woman drops off her daughter, I think, at school, and she is called up a little while later from a stranger saying, I've kidnapped your child, and if you want her back, you have to pay a ransom, but then also go abduct someone else's kid. And I, I don't know. I think that this could be either like very good or just very bad. I have heard really mixed things about this, so I really don't know, but I just think I'm gonna have to try it out and see. I'm gonna start with this one though, because I am a little bit more in the mood for something lighter and more like cozy and I feel like that's what this is. Now my reading for the past like four or five days has been <laughs> virtually non-existent because a new game came out for the Nintendo Switch. It's the new Harvest Moon game and I got it and I've been playing it non-stop. It's like a farm game where you like build up a farm and you have animals and stuff and I used to play Harvest Moon on GameCube ages ago when GameCube was a thing and it's just a very wholesome game. It's kind of like Animal Crossing but more like farm life-ish. I do want to get back into reading now though. I feel like I can't spend my whole day just playing that game and I feel like this vlog is gonna help motivate me to like read again and I do also miss it. Like I really want to read especially this one. I also think I'm gonna try to like 
time my reading a little bit like I'm gonna try to keep track of how many hours I read each day because I actually find that to be quite motivating so I'm gonna try to keep track of like how long I've read and how many pages and I'll like update you as we go along. I've also downloaded an app, I did this a couple of weeks ago, where it sort of locks your phone for the timer that you set it for so you don't go on your phone and get distracted and I'm gonna try to use that to read and try to like concentrate on getting some reading done. I think I'm gonna go actually try to start this now though. I don't know how much reading I'm gonna be able to do today, it's like two o'clock now and I've spent the day so far filming a video. It took ages because the light is so shifty today so I kept having to like wait for the sun to appear and it just took ages and I think maybe I'm gonna try to edit that today although I also feel like really reading and also playing my Nintendo a little bit so we'll see how that goes but I'm gonna start by reading and I'm also a little bit hungry, as I always am. I feel like I mentioned that in every vlog I make. I'm hungry, but I am, I am. Uh, I actually got a breakfast delivery today by my dad, which was so sweet. He sent me like, he and his girlfriend and like, he always says like, love from dad and then his girlfriend and then the girlfriend's kid and then the dog. <laughs> so I guess it's from all of them. But I got this huge box of food and I've eaten some of it and it had like apple juice and jam and some like buns and stuff and there's quite a lot left. So I think I'm gonna eat some of that and then start the book and I guess maybe edit, I don't really know. But I'm gonna try, I feel like I should be able to do like at least two hours of reading today. Maybe that should be the goal. I'm not gonna set a goal for like pages of num pages of numbers? Numbers of pages or like time for these days because I can't deal with too much pressure. I'm just gonna keep track of it. And I think I should be able to read for two hours today. Although we'll see. I thought I would show you what I got in this food box though. I've taken some of it out, like it had apple juice and then jam, but it also had like these buns. I don't know what you call this in English, but these are quite like popular here in Norway. They're like sweet buns with like vanilla stuff in them. And then I got these like Easter donuts. They're a little bit smashed, but I'm sure they're gonna be very delicious. And I think I'm gonna eat one of these and then maybe one of these or maybe all of it. I don't know. page 48 of this yeah page 48 and I've been reading for about 45 minutes and I feel like I'm not far enough into this to have any sort of opinions but it is definitely like a cozy more like easy going mystery it's not like super dark I think this is gonna be a pretty light read we're reading about this woman who lives in a small English village called Marlow, which it says it's like a town or a village outside of London. And her introduction, like right away, I was like, mm, this is my girl. Cause it says that she is like really happy with her life, mostly because she doesn't have to share it with any man. <laughs> and no one is asking her what's for dinner or what she's doing or like complaining about the fact that she drinks whiskey in the evenings. And she seems kind of eccentric, but like a really fun old lady. She also does this thing every afternoon or evening. She goes for a naked bath in the Thames. She goes for like a swim. And in the first chapter, she goes on the swim. And while she's like swimming around, she I think swims by her neighbor or something and she hears voices in the neighbor's garden and she hears a gunshot and she is assuming that her neighbor has been shot or something so she calls the police and they send someone over to like check it out but they don't find anything so she goes in to investigate herself and she finds her neighbor's 
dead body. She doesn't feel like the police are taking it seriously though, like they think that maybe it was an accident or something, but she is convinced that this guy's been murdered and she like sets off on her bike right away to try and start investigating. And she's already found like a suspect <laughs> that she's just gone over to and harassed a little bit. <laughs> and she's, yeah, she's taking things into her own hands and that's as far as I've gotten. She seems like quite a busy body in some ways. She reminds me a little bit of Miss Marple, just more forceful. The main character also works with creating crossword puzzles, which I think explains this cover, at least partly. And yeah, that's as far as I've gotten. So far I don't have any strong opinions this way or the other. So far it's pretty alright. It is a little over the top, but I kind of knew that because the other books that I've read by this author are also kind of over the top, so I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but hopefully it works in this book as well as I feel like it has in the others. Now I think, although I haven't read that much, I'm gonna take a little bit of a break from reading. I don't know what happens in the afternoons, but I get so sleepy sometimes and I can tell that I'm like starting to doze off and I don't really want to do that, so I'm gonna have to like do something other than reading. I think I'm gonna do some chores, I have some stuff I need to do, and then I might go for like a very quick walk. It kind of... I get the sense that it's gonna start to rain soon and I'm <laughs> not gonna go outside if it rains, so maybe I should go for like a little bit of a walk first, just to like get some air for the day. I feel like the further we get into this pandemic, the more walks I go on and it's like, it's helpful to just get some air, but I'm so tired of walking around my neighborhood because I just, you know, I see it all the time now. <laughs> when I get back though, I think I'm gonna have some leftovers for dinner and I'm gonna maybe watch a movie or an episode of something and I'm gonna have an early night, I can already tell. I'm gonna take the book with me and try to read a little bit more, but I might not talk to you again until tomorrow morning. Good morning, everyone. It's now the next day and it's like 10 o'clock. I've been up for a little while, but I haven't really done much except go to the post office to pick up a package. I figured I would go early because it's gonna rain later and also I figured there would be less people if I went early. I was wrong about that. <laughs> there were like loads of people so it took quite a while but it's okay because you know I have all day and now I'm back and I have nothing I need to do for the rest of the day except read. I read for about half an hour in bed last night and I made it to page 82 before I fell asleep and it's getting pretty good. Another murder has occurred and it seems like we maybe have like a serial killer on our hands in this, which is very, very exciting. And we've been introduced to some more characters, so we're reading from more perspectives, so I'm excited to keep reading. I wonder like who the next victim is going to be and how they're connected. I can't wait to find out. Before I get to reading though, I'm going to eat some breakfast and open the package that I got, which I can show you. I got some prints for my wall that I think I'm going to hang up today. I'm going to put them over my couch. I painted that wall a couple of weeks ago and I took down what was on it and I didn't really feel like putting it back up. I felt like changing it up a bit, so I ordered some prints and I'm very excited to see them. I don't quite know how big they are, <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Hopefully it looks all right. So I haven't actually opened this yet, I haven't seen them yet, but I'm gonna open it now. And how cute is this tote bag? I got this from basically Brit, like she's a fellow booktuber and she makes these. I had to get it because I love the design and I love using it. It makes me so happy. But yeah, 
let's open the package. I don't know how easy it's gonna be to show you these, but I got three of like these types of prints. So this is like old classic art, but then it has this border around it, and this is the artist. And I got three different ones, and I'm gonna hang them next to each other over the couch. I think that's gonna look good. The size is pretty perfect. I'm not gonna frame them because I honestly just can't be bothered. I'm gonna use these clip things to hang them up that I have like put together and it's hard to take them up. I'm just gonna use these to hang them on the wall, like one for each, and hopefully that looks all right. through the book and I thought I would just check in. I have been reading for about an hour and a half ish and it's going pretty well. I feel like I'm in a good flow of reading right now. I don't know what it is but I like I love reading but I have a hard time concentrating on a book for a long period of time. So I've found that like reading for half an hour and setting a timer for it and then taking a break works really well for me and that's what I'm doing now, and I think that if I keep doing that for the rest of the day, I should be able to make pretty good progress on this. I think that this is good, and it's very enjoyable. I like this little like team of amateur sleuths, like we have the main character who works with making crossword puzzles, and she's very... She's kind of nosy and brash and intense, and she is very impulsive and she's like getting involved where she shouldn't but it sort of drives the story forward so it makes sense and she's sort of made friends with the wife of a priest who lives in this like amazing clean super tidy house and she she's like a housewife but she feels a little bad about it it seems like and then they've made friends with a dog walker who was the neighbor of one of the people who's been killed in this book. And the three of them sort of try to do some amateur sleuthing together. I do find the characters in here to be somewhat stereotypical, but I am enjoying reading about them, so I guess it's fine. I maybe find the main character, the older lady, a little bit too much. <laughs> like, she's slightly annoying, but it is mostly in like a fun way. I'm gonna keep reading though and in a little while I'm gonna make some dinner. I'm gonna make some chicken I think. I feel like eating some chicken and I'm sort of hoping that it's gonna start raining. Like it said on the forecast that it was gonna be like really heavy rain today and I feel like it would be nice if it started and I could like open the door and listen to it while I'm reading because that's very cozy but it doesn't seem to be happening like very soon but maybe this evening, we'll see. Either way, I'm gonna keep reading in my half hour <laughs> increments and hopefully, maybe, I'll be able to finish this today. I've now finished the book. I read for another hour and a half-ish. I went quite quickly through the end because it did get quite exciting at some points and overall I would say that I liked this but didn't love it. It was good but not great but it was fun and enjoyable. I think this gets plus points for being very enjoyable and it was a very cozy read. I think the setting is great and I liked the characters and I think that the plot is pretty strong. Like the mystery is fairly intricate and I enjoyed like trying to figure out who had done it but I do think that when we got to the end, I don't want to spoil it but like we basically have this like 10 page long monologue about what 
has happened and like how everything fits together and I felt like that maybe dragged out a little bit. It was supposed to be exciting and parts of it was but it got, I don't know, it was just a little long. It gets some minus points for being not predictable necessarily, maybe a little bit, but the mystery is intriguing but the reveal, like how it fits together is not all that original, I think, and at some point it's pretty obvious that that is what's going on, at least to me, I felt, and I wasn't disappointed in it, but I just wasn't that surprised by it, if that makes sense. It didn't bring anything new to the table. I also think that there are some things in here that are a little convenient, like there are certain scenes where I'm like, it was just a little too easy sometimes, I think, and it gets a trillion minus points for using the sentence she let out a breath she didn't know she was holding. I hate that. <laughs> I hate that so much. Whenever I come across that in a book, I'm just like, no, someone needs to edit that out. That doesn't need to be in any book. It's the most overused sentence ever and it just needs to like be banned. <laughs> I will say the style of this is as I expected. Like when I think about the other books that I've read by this author, the style is very similar and the way that he crafts characters is kind of similar. They're a little bit like over the top and they're not one dimensional, but they're just a little much, I think. And I think that I maybe enjoy the other books by this author a little bit better, but maybe that's just because I... I don't know, I just love the island setting of his other books. I also couldn't help but compare this a little bit to the book that I mentioned in the beginning of the vlog. I didn't mean to, but unintentionally in my head I kept like thinking about it a little bit. And I think that that book, the other book, The Thursday Murder Club, this is the Marlowe Murder Club. They basically have the same title and kind of a lot of the same things going on in it. Like we have elderly sleuths trying to figure out a murder and everything. They're kind of similar and I couldn't help but compare them a little bit. And I think that the other one is a little better than this one maybe. I enjoyed the other one a little bit more. That's not to say that I didn't like this. I just think that yeah, I don't really know what to say. It was good, but not great. I will say though, I'm pretty pleased with myself that I managed to finish that book today. I've read for three and a half or four hours today, which is pretty good for me. Like I mentioned, I have to take like breaks in between my reading. I can't just sit down and read for like hours on end. So with that, I feel like I did pretty well. Now I am gonna start this book today, I think, and I might try to get like half an hour, another half an hour reading in, but I think it's gonna be in bed because I have that video that I filmed yesterday that I have neglected to edit today and it, it's going up tomorrow so I kind of have to do it now. So that's probably gonna take me like an hour, maybe a little bit longer, it depends. I don't really know. But I'm gonna try to start this one today and I feel like I'm on a roll so maybe I'll be able to like finish this tomorrow. If I manage to read as much tomorrow as I did today, I think I might be able to do it. This is almost 400 pages though, so maybe I won't be able to do it now that I think about it. I'm not a particularly like fast reader really, so it might take me a little bit of time, but we'll see how far I get today and I will update you on that tomorrow. <laughs> again folks it's now the next day <laughs> it's Thursday and it's a beautiful day here today like the sky is so blue and the Sun is out and it's lovely and it's like 12 o'clock now and I slept in kind of late and I just got like distracted by doing other things but I have read a little bit in this as well I'm on page 54 
I read for about 15 minutes in bed last night before I fell asleep and I've read for half an hour today so I haven't read that much in this yet but it's exactly what I expected it to be. It's very over the top and very dramatic and it like starts being pretty exciting like right away. I think I've already explained what the story is about. It's about this chain of kidnappings and we meet this mother who has had her daughter kidnapped from a bus stop and she's been called up by both whoever runs the chain and the person who has kidnapped her daughter and they keep like talking about the importance of the chain and how you have to respect the chain and all of these things and it seems like there's quite the mastermind behind it which is maybe the part that I'm the most excited about and this woman who has had her daughter kidnapped she has to kidnap someone else as well and she's just like gotten money for the ransom and she's bought a gun and I'm only like 50 pages in and already all of that has happened. I don't really have that much to say about the characters or the setting or anything. It seems like a very plot heavy novel like I think that's what this is gonna be like that's the most important thing and I am curious as to how this is gonna be because I feel like a lot has happened already and I still have so much of the book left so I wonder how that's gonna go. We also got a chapter from the perspective of someone who is either involved with or is running the chain. And I hope we get more of those because I thought that was very exciting. The plan for today though is just to do some more reading and I'm gonna do some baking as well. I'm gonna start that now I think and I can show you what I'm gonna make. I got this cookbook quite recently and I got it because I follow this woman on Instagram and she runs a blog where she shares recipes and stuff and I thought it could be fun to like try out some of them. It's also signed which is pretty cool and this translates to everything Asian so there's just a bunch of like Asian dishes from all over Asia. One of my favorite things about this book is in the very beginning here she writes about all the different ingredients that are typical in an Asian kitchen and what part of Asia they're from and where they're commonly used. And then there's a picture of all of the ingredients that she uses the most. I find this very helpful because a lot of these things I can't <laughs> read what it says on it so I don't know what it is. So I've brought like this picture to the local shop and just been like I need this and that's very helpful. And it like explains all the different ingredients and stuff and this is the book that I learned how to make dumplings from, which were delicious. It also explains how to fold different types of dumplings, which I think is very helpful. I really want to like try to make all kinds of different dumplings because it's just so good and everything in here looks delicious. I've also made this recipe from this book. This is like fried noodles and this was delicious and I kind of want to make like everything in this book like everything looks so good and I love any kind of like Asian food really. It says right here like what part of Asia it's from which is really cool. What I'm gonna make today though is this. These are Japanese milk buns and I've never had these. I don't know what they taste like. I just thought they looked delicious so I figured I would try to make them. It's now five o'clock and I have two updates for you. The first is that the buns that I made were delicious. They were really good. They turned out surprisingly well. I'm not the best baker in the world, but they turned out really good. And there's nothing quite like freshly made, slightly warm 
baked goods, so I'm very pleased with myself for that. My second update is that I actually finished this book. So <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this book. I sped through it, like it took me maybe three and a half hours to like read the rest of this. It was a pretty quick read, like it felt very fast and I wanted to keep reading because it was pretty exciting. But I don't know if I would say that it was particularly like good and I didn't love how it turned out. Like we sort of learn what the chain is and who's behind it and I don't know if I love that part. I think if you're looking for a thrillery read that's quite exciting and has a lot of things going on in it, you might like this, but if you're one of those people like me who <laughs> cares quite a lot about characters and like character description and really getting to know them and settings and like anything else than plot, I don't know if this is... I don't know if I would really recommend this. It feels to me like this is one of those books that I am going to forget very quickly. I don't think that I'm going to remember any of the characters' names like by the end of the week and I don't think anything in here is really gonna like stick with me. There was one twist that I thought was kind of cool but other than that this was just sort of okay I think. I sort of sped through it partly because it was exciting and partly because I wanted it to be over because it wasn't that good. I am actually really glad that I read this book though because this is a book that I've like seen in bookshops for ages and like wondered if I should read or not and I just wanted to read it to find out for myself and like now I can move on with my life and now I know. I am in a really good reading mood though so I think I'm gonna start another book this evening although I don't really know what I'm gonna read but I'm sure I can find something. Now I did start editing this vlog quickly a couple of hours ago and I think it's gonna be quite a long video so I think we should sort of round it off here. If you made it this far into the video I'm very impressed. Thank you very much and thank you for hanging out with me. I'd love to know if you have read any of the books that I read for this vlog and what you thought or you can tell me what you're currently reading maybe and I'll see you soon. Bye!